You might be wondering, what is he doing outside? Well, this is a special occasion because my new single has been released. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I made it. So as you see, I'm using Ableton and it doesn't really matter if you use Apple Studio or any digital audio workstation um, because the concepts are the same. And I use MIDI notes to make melodies. I use samples like kicks and, and snares and percussion and everything like that. Uh, I drag them into the playlist, I add effects and I mostly use third party plugins uh, so you can buy them as well. So let's get right into the project. But let's start with the lead. Um, I've got three main layers and then one layer has multiple layers in itself. That layer has character and the other layers um, add some other things to it. So this is the, uh, the lead. And the first layer of the lead is this one. And this layer has the most character, it's the most important one. And as you can see, it's made up of uh, multiple other uh, layers of leads. And I will show them one by one. And after that, I process those leads by doing a low cut and adding some EQ, adding an ozone to add some more treble in the highs. Um, I added a kickstart with a little bit of uh, mix so it doesn't really sight in too hard. And the second lead is this one, which is a silent one with a noise oscillator and a sine oscillator just to fill those frequencies up. And then we have another lead over here. And this lead is for widening up the sound and adding more uh, room to it and adding more character to it as well. And to carry this out like this. So a very important part of a house track is the reverb and uh, these three leads go into one group and this group goes to the reverb over here. It's an Ars Acoustic reverb, uh, you can copy the settings if you want. Then I added a compressor with the side chain, so it receives audio from the lead group. And when the lead is playing, the reverb ducks down. That way the reverb won't interfere too much with the sound of the lead and the lead stays clean. Then as an extra layer, what I always do, I add chords to it. Uh, these two are multiple layers of synths. Which make a huge sound. And these chords are layered with the leads again and they together uh, have their own processing. I added another kickstart over here with the mix really low. And these chords also go into the reverb over here. Um, and these chords fill up the frequencies so the leads have more uh, depth to them and more energy. And on top of that, I also added the lead bass over here. I did a low cut so it doesn't interfere with the, the kick. And then I also added uh, mids to fill up the track to add some more frequencies, to add some more um, like a spatial vibe. And they sound like this. Um, and these are also just separate layers. And as far as the mids go, they have really basic processing like um, a low cut, a kickstart, 
with the mix pretty high and then like filters and stuff just general stuff to to be creative with and when low cutting the mid it's important to not low cut it too high like i did over here but uh, some i did not really look at that high the sub has its own space but you don't want it too high because otherwise it will sound empty and and the area from 100 to 500 is a really important area but you have to be careful that you don't add too much information there um, but also not too little because if you remove a lot of the mids and a lot of like frequencies from the kick the, the track will really sound empty and, and dull so the kick has a few different things to it i have a normal kick layer that i always use I've used this one for years already and I wanted the track to sound a little bit more fresh, a little bit more modern, so I decided to add a kick layer to it. And then I added a lot of different punches, um, each with their own character. Uh, like we've got a somatics kick over here, which adds a lot of depth to the punch, but we also have uh, higher punches. And these all together make the full kick sound, uh, which is really in your face. So when finalizing the mix, I noticed that the mids were not really present enough. And I decided to send this kick layer to the reverb. So the kick also has a lot more space and um, fits better in the mix. <laughs> And to add some more layers to the climax, I added some more chords. And these chords I also used in the beginning of the track, um, but I will show you that later. And apart from that, I also used like a music box bell kind of sound with a lot of reverb and it has an appreciator on it, uh, which is from Ableton. And I also added some sweeps and some crashes, some exhaust to, to add some more impact to the climax. And together it sounds like this. So this was the climax element of the track and now I will show you all the other sounds um, and each one of those sounds adds a unique element to the track and a unique vibe. So I will begin at the start. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. So let's first look at the vocal that I used. Even though I walk through the darkest valley. And without processing it sounds like this. Even though I walk through the darkest valley. Um, it's a normal vocal but I pitch it down a little bit, not, not too much. Um, so it sounds natural still. So some of the EQs I added an on off function. Um, because in the build up I didn't want too much of the low end so I turned it on over here. Even though I walk through the darkest valley. And what you hear is an effect. Um, I have a Redux plugin on it, uh, which is turned off right now, but I sampled it. Um, like I froze the track and I put it in there uh, again, and it sounds like this. Even though I walk through the dark. If 
if you want to, I can make another video about this, uh, about how I made this effect. Um, but I won't get into it now because it will cost a little bit too much time. Um, so let's look at the other instruments, like the live instruments that I used. For this, I use contact libraries, some ensembles, uh, a swing nylon guitar, music box, which is really good. And I will just play them separately. And then we have the music box that I also showed you in the climax. And I basically just added a lot of reverb to all of the sounds. Um, I added a tremolo violin over here uh, with expressions. And these expressions add a lot of character to the sound. So this music box that I used um, has a no melody over here. Um, but right here uh, in the climax, it has the impagiator turned on. So over here, I turn it off, as you can see. And over here, I turn it on again. But it's actually the same sound. And now we go to the, as I call it, impact of the track. Uh, which on its own sounds like this. And here we have those chords again that I showed you. I wanted to add these chords as sort of like some dubstep chords. And all the leads and all the chords have these tremolo effects to them, uh, which I will show you over here. And even the bass has that effect too. And this bass is just a greedy bass from Silent with a sub below it, and with some automation uh, like the filter. And then I added percussion and, and main elements like a kick, snare, an extra serum bass, which looks like this. It's just a serum bass from uh, Splice, I think. I added some hats, which add a little bit of the, those high frequencies that you really need in the track. And then we have some other bass sounds which are just some layers. And of course, I also added toms and sweeps and exhausts. And then we also got like a little bit more of a raw lead over here. which also has two silent one in it. And again, I will make a tutorial about this if you want to, um, but we just don't have the time today to show it all to you. So all of the elements in the track have automation to them, um, the mids, the, the leads, the chords. And this is the main way the track gets its energy from all the automation, the volumes going down and up again, and all these movements. And after the first impact, um, it all builds up to a new, bigger sound.
and I added these bases here to get a little bit more of that in your face sound and to fill up the frequency some more. And these are just some Reese bases from Serum that I downloaded from Splice. And then we got the build up over here. So this part is also a lot of volume automation, a lot of tweaking little things around. And I will just show you a little bit of the sounds. And that way you can get an idea of what I'm doing. And I also added a thumb fill over here. And this is just one tom which I automated the pitch of and then I consolidated it again over here. And then I also added these sounds. And then I also added a little bit more percussion and an action loop which I distorted a bunch to add more energy to the build up and the track. But I also added this one and this one has a camo crusher on it with a lot of distortion and you hear if I turn all the effects off it sounds nothing like uh, it does in the track. So yeah all the leads and all the chords and all the sounds also have a pitch automation. So what I also did, I added an automation from the master in the track um, and this automation is uh, with automation so the track is a little bit more mono in the build up so when the climax hits it widens up the sound. What you also hear in the build up are these basses which are from Virtual Riot. But I added my own effects on them and I exported them to really create my own sound. So I hope you get the general idea of the track and now I will show you uh, one last thing which is the screech at the end. So the screech sounds like this. Which is three layers of silent one. And two of those layers have a camel fat in them and that camel fat has an automation which goes like this. So by automating the cutoff you get a really screechy sound. And then I added some overall processing like EQ, a camo crusher, a sidechain and some more EQ. And after that the track continues and goes into the melody again. So this is the showcase of my latest track. If you have any specific questions, you can ask them in the comments. Um, if you want me to get into more detail about things, then you can ask those and uh, I will e either reply to the comments or I will make a new video about it. And I will be live streaming more often. So if you don't want to miss those, subscribe to my channel so you get a notification. And lastly, you can get my newest track through the links in the description. Thank you for watching and I will see you later.